that, that, no, 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 dude. That's, that's my barf bag. That's your barf bag? <laughs> Sponsored, right. sponsored by uh, Dream, Dream Tea Homes. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to this week's vlog. So we are, should I call it Castro or is it Rad Race? Yeah, it's Rad Torque for the first year. Right? Yeah, but it's been Castro for a lot for of years. For time, right? Yeah. So as some of you guys know, I've never been on a racetrack ever in my life, believe it or not. Like, it's always been on the street. So this is my first official, um, well, not even driving, just being a passenger, well, hopefully... I don't throw up, but I have a barf bag, <laughs> a barf bag with me. But here's my uh, real good friend, Peter Liu. Hey guys. I know I've mentioned many times on my vlog, you guys, he is the man when it comes to wheels. And uh, apparently he's a race car driver too. So you sell real wheels, <laughs> you got to test the wheels. Right? That's how it does, yeah. right? Yeah. We're going to put it to its limit today, but he has a gorgeous 8.6 that you guys that he's pretty much done up and uh, instead of me talking about it, let's uh, let's get Peter to uh, introduce us to his car uh, hey guys yeah so this is my GTA 6 started out as a Sonda FRS uh, I bought this car actually brand new 2013 so I've had it for 10 years so I've always done a little bit of mods every year just to kind of get it up to tune uh, it's still naturally aspirated a lot of focus kind of just aero suspension because out here you know, number one's reliability, so I want to make sure it was reliable because uh, at that time I was just starting out. So I wanted to be getting a lot of seat time. I didn't want to be wrenching on the car a lot. So mostly aero and suspension, a little bit of power mods. Obviously being like the demo car of the shop, I've had to, you know, put in a lot of parts and this is where we test all the parts. So seats, wheels, whatever. I've used this car a lot for testing and uh, also improved my times out there pretty often. So I think there's like 10th year kind of for everything. 10th year tracking, 10th year ownership of the car. Just been working on all of it little bits at a time, so. Uh, that's all we got here, and uh, yeah, so I guess if we're talking about wheels, got the Volk ZD40, 18 by 10, and this year I got some pretty good tires, I got the Advin AO52, this first time I'm running like this low tread wear of a tire, I've been kind of like doing this for 10 years, so I really wanted to see where my pace was at, so I got, you know, the grippier tires this year, and uh, yeah, we got grid racing seats in there, outside here, body work, I have various hood, TRD, body kit, uh, you know, I got some nice carbon bits, TRD carbon bits, a uh, carbon mirror, this is the riser, and of course got the big wing in the back. And uh, yeah, it's just what I can do to like keep up with the immensely higher horsepower cars out there. Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of power out here. <laughs> as you guys have to understand, like I'm, for me it's a lot of, like I emphasize a lot on horsepower, but on the circuit and on the road uh, racetrack, Horsepower is not always uh, the key, it's uh, balance, like a Japanese way. It's always about balance, and then if you have a balanced car, you will do fairly well, right? Yeah, and I've also like kind of had a philosophy, you guys might like, I like to read a dog fight, you know, the art of time attack. In Japan, when you do time attack, you don't just go all out, just all the specs of the car. They do it in a way where it's like simplistic, beautiful, and also functional. They kind of meld the two, so my car it has some components on it that, you know, they're just nicer or more crafty pieces. And to aid the performance a bit, I probably could have gone cheaper on the parts, but I wanted the car to also aesthetically and everything be like kind of yeah. harmonious because I've yeah. been building it for so long. Yeah. And you guys, it's this is it looks like a show car, but it, it's it actually it's functional, you guys. And it's well, we're gonna see it. We're gonna see it on the track, and hopefully you guys don't see me throw up. Yeah, so pretty, <laughs> yeah, so pretty dirty under here. I, I, it's raining today. I didn't bring my rain guards. So if you guys are gonna have to hit rain guards, but yeah, I got this intake, full exhaust header. I've done all the cooling for liability. We got a Blitz racing radiator, Blitz hoses. I have a Cusco oil cooler, so to keep temps low. Strut bar, oil catch can, and underneath you all know, spark plugs, tune, um, injectors, everything. So just everything to keep the car NA, keep it really reliable. Because, uh, you know, out here, number one thing we're working on, driver mod. And I didn't want to be wrenching on the car in the pits. I wanted to yeah. be out there getting my seat time, work on my skills. So this car has mostly been NA. And also, uh, another thing is, like, if you're starting on the track, uh, a lot of guys, they have big power vehicles. They come out here. They don't learn to carry speed through a corner. They'll just, like, brake hard, get around the corner, gas hard. And then you start using power as kind of a crutch. You'll notice out here when we have, like, a lower horsepower car, you actually really start learning how to carry speed, use the grip that's available, benefit to the arrow, set up your car properly to have it like balance well through the corner. So that's why this has stayed naturally aspirated the whole time I've owned it. That's like me, you guys. 
too much power. I'd probably be in the grass by the by the time. So what's the most important mod do you think that gave you the most improvement on your time, Peter? Driver mod. Driver That's mod? That's number one. Yeah. Second, probably tires. Tires is huge. Tires, eh? Yeah, tires is really big. And then third thing, probably uh, brakes, wheels. Yeah. And then uh, after you kind of done that, next is probably aero. Really, eh? Yeah. And what, what about suspension? You don't think suspension is a key role? Oh, sorry. Suspension was supposed to be right after tires. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, okay. So what did you do on your suspension here? So I have like RSR Sports Eye Coilovers. And uh, those are developed just for the 8.6. It was kind of like RSR's first foray back into North America. Yeah. Did the 8.6 coils. And then underneath, I have all the bracing. So I have rear bracing, strut bar bracing. I have all the bushings done. So the car, modern car has lots of uh, bushings for reducing noise, vibration, harshness. But actually every time you do something, it flexes a bit, so you lose a bit of speed. So steering bushings, diff bushing, rear subframe bushing, all the bushings are done to be a lot stiffer. And another thing is uh, underneath the body, I've also done like transmission bushings and oh, okay. uh, stuff like that. So that's been a, so you changed a bit. lot of bushings. Yeah, a lot of the arms, lower control arms. Yeah. I've also done everything that I could to like adjust the camber. Camber actually makes a big difference on a track, even like yeah. one or two extra degrees. That yeah. does a lot too. Yeah. Yep. And you don't have a roll cage in yours, right? No, I don't have a roll cage. Because um, the reason why I was asking, Peter, is I was considering because I have the roll cage for the GTR, yeah. but I haven't put it in yet. It, mm -hmm. One part of it is because I didn't really want to cut into my or drill into my panel. Yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering, does it make a big difference if yeah. I put it in or not? It does. Like uh, a roll cage for us, when we change, it actually changes the class of your vehicle. You move up oh, a really, class, we eh? have a roll cage. Yeah. yeah, because we actually increase the rigidity a lot and the safety equipment and everything involved in it, 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 it amps your car up. Yeah. yeah, so later when we talk about classing, you'll see like how it kind of pushes okay. your car up to the next so level. So do you recommend me running the car before the roll cage goes in or? Or does After? It, yeah. I think it's good either way. Either yeah, way. yeah, it's good either way with a roll cage. So like, eventually if you get to that point, you know, whatever you can do early, you just do early, do right? Early. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Especially okay. if you have it already. Yeah, I have it. I if you have it, it and you're not installed it, that's kind of like money sitting, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty This much. is a sunk cost you spent already, so yeah. you might as well capture the benefits of it yeah. as early as possible yeah. if you already have it, right? Okay, okay, you guys heard that, so yeah. we might install the roll cage after this. Course, that's my philosophy on anything that's like circuit or car mods. It's like, if you know you want it, you're gonna get it. You're gonna spend money on it anyways. You're gonna spend like either a thousand now or two, you're gonna spend a thousand. Yeah. Just spend it now, then you get the benefits of it way earlier, right? Yeah. If you're gonna spend it anyways. All right, up next, we're gonna talk about interior mods that Peter did uh, to improve uh, race time. All right, so obviously the seats, uh, cause you know, Fong's featured Bridge Japan Canada in a lot of his videos. So we supplied the seats from those videos. But seat is probably the first mod and the most important mod actually, I think for a vehicle on the interior because the only way you're contacting your car and uh, you're gonna find out exactly later when the in-car footage, why having a racing seat <laughs> really, really beneficial. And I actually have two of them in there because actually my car sometimes is actually the track taxi as well. And they like to be like, oh, put them in Peter's car because Peter has two buckets. So it actually helps a lot. Second mod is the steering wheel. Uh, modern cars have pretty good, pretty firm steering wheels. But I feel with the aftermarket steering wheel, you definitely get a lot more control. The rigidity of the steering wheel helps a lot. But, you know, the consequence is you lose your airbag. But I have that done as well. And uh, other than that, it's supposed to like just little things, shift knob. And uh, yeah, I kept the interior pretty, pretty complete because I'm... Um, to be honest, like when you kind of start racing, you don't know how long you're gonna keep your interior for, because that might be something that goes eventually yeah. for the pursuit of speed. Okay, yeah. so so do you agree the most two important mods for racing wise would be the seats and the steering wheel? Then add, add, yeah. Add, yeah, add any other interior mods, those yeah. would be the, the two number one, right? Two number ones, yeah. 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 These are nice, but they're kind of a pain in the ass for street, eh? Yeah. I don't recommend them for street. Yeah, not really. For everyday uh, use. Everyday use, it's uh, really painful, yeah. Yeah, for solar yeah. checking and everything. Yeah, but uh, I have to run a race harness this whole time almost now because I don't have an airbag now. <laughs> so the system works in conjunction. It's going to release and let you forward, and then you don't have an airbag, so kind of sketchy there. Yeah. All right, guys, so I'm pretty new. Why well, I'm new... So I'm really new at this. I don't know anything about racing or anything, even on the drag strip. So I'm gonna get Peter to explain to us, for all us newbies that don't know any of the rules and stuff, and or classes or stuff like that, or stuff that we should know, or what to expect when you get to the racetrack. Yeah, so if you're trying to get your car on a track, I think uh, first thing you gotta do is make sure your car's roadworthy. That's probably number one, but there's lots of videos on that. I'm pretty sure like everybody can cover that. You know, good pads, brake fluid, make sure you got gas, you can need gas for racing. But uh, obviously here we're doing lapping, so it's a high performance driver education. 
And uh, most people that come out here, we've got three classes of that. So we've got three groups. We've got green, yellow, red. Green, it's your first time out. What happens is when you get here, just the track junkies, that's the organization that runs it, you get to have an instructor with you for a fee. And that first day, they're out there with you all day. They're making sure, you know, you're breaking at the right times, appropriate track, you know, etiquette, making sure that everybody's all doing everything safe. And hopefully by the end of the day, you get signed off. Once you're signed off, you can go out on your own. But then you come subsequent days, you get to go up to yellow, you get to go up to red. All the cars down here, this is all parked. These are all the time attack cars. So time attack is a timed event. And for our track here, time attack just means fastest person around a track. That's your raw time. And we also have a pack system. Pack system is where they kind of weigh off your car's horsepower, your weight, your mods and everything. And they can kind of put it through like a multiplier so that, you know, the time attack here, because Edmonton, you know, it's not like a huge, huge time attack crowd, but you gotta balance the scales a bit because you don't want to turn it into a money game, right? Some guy shows up in a GT3 RS and you show up in FRS. How is it gonna make it fun or competitive? So PAX balances that out. And uh, those are kind of like the three classes you get when you come up to Track Junkies. So really safe environment. Everything is really good out here. They got paramedics ready. They got a tow car. If something happens, they pull you out. So that's a really solid setup they have here. So it's something that um, I think if you've never been to the track, you have like a high performance vehicle or any vehicle and you want to experience it like fully for like, you know, not on the street. This is the way I think is the best way to do it. So Peter, when you're doing a time attack, are you going with a whole bunch of other people or, or or let's say if you're not comfortable, are you can you go by yourself first or? No, uh, you're kind of out there with all the time attack guys, all at the same so you're time. So you're thrown in with the whole group, you're right? You're thrown in with the whole group, group. yeah. Okay. You're thrown with the whole group and uh, whoever's in there, they're going there. But uh, one thing is at the beginning, in the morning we have practice, that's not for points. Then you have qualifying after, then we have three rounds of points. So after practice and qualifying, those are not for points, just practice. Uh, they actually get the position of all the cards fastest to slowest and it let them out fastest to slowest. So oh, most okay. times for time attack, you get four or five clean laps at the beginning of the session. So those are your, kind of your best time to set your fastest lap time without any traffic or anybody impeding you. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. how it works here, yeah. Makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's a pretty good setup. You know, everybody's needs and things are taken care of here. Okay. Yep. That, that, no, 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 dude, that, that's my barf bag. That's your barf bag? <laughs> Sponsored, uh, sponsored by uh, Dream, Dream Tea Homes. <laughs> Trust me, you don't need this. You're not gonna need it, man. You're not gonna need it. All right, guys, I'm gonna set you guys here. Okay, just gonna get my camera, uh, my helmet, and we're ready to roll. All right, so this is how it's gonna go. If you feel like you're gonna get sick, you just tap me on the arm twice, okay. and we'll pull off. Okay. It's better to be early than late. <laughs> For your sake, Chris. Huh? For your sake, Chris. Doesn't matter to me, this is an FRS. I don't really care, but there's been like lots of things, like um, a girl threw up in a GT3 RS. Really, eh? Yeah, a couple years ago. So that was like, kind of reiterated everybody's like, ugh, you know, gotta be, gotta be careful out here. But yeah, I don't really. But I, uh, we're, I'm gonna go out slow first, just so yeah. I can show you the track. Yeah. And then after we do that, then we'll see what happens next. Okay. Okay. When you're on the track, you don't run the AC, right? Did you? No, I need the power, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this is the FRS, man. I need every. <laughs> I, I, I need every. I need every horsepower, man. Look at, look at some of these cars out here. They're like 400 horsepower plus. Yeah. Eh? It's ridiculous. Just low lead Toyota. But it's okay. Only driver mod matters. How do you do uh, against these guys, the S2000s and stuff? Uh, I do okay. Do, right? But they're really good, the S2000. The yeah. thing about the S2000 I found was like, they're a lot older. Yeah. So the underbody is like all like a skeleton. So for some of the corners on the track here, they can't really um, go full out. So that's why a lot of them you see they have underbody. Yeah. And almost every SC thousand out here has a wing because they really need that downforce. Go around here. 
here. Now we got very, very tight here. Yeah, very tight here. And you're good here, okay? This is turn four. This is a gravel trap. So some guys drive off, they go into gravel. Yeah. Come around here. Keep it very tight here. Very good racing lines here. This is turn five. This is a high speed one. So this was high speed. Come up over here. High speed up to here. And then this turn six. Carry the speed. Here I carry speed, I always go 
you are and tell you that oh, you're man. actually driving with somebody that knows. Yeah. Key thing, when you come in there, never pull your handbrake. Yeah. The like, brakes are so hot, it'll weld them together. Oh, okay. Never touch a handbrake. That's my number one top tip for track drivers. First time. Put this back in for now. Yeah, it's a rub. I knew you were gonna be fine. I, I can You're so it. worried. I can feel it. You feel it? <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna lie, man. It's only when you get like when you come come to a stop. Yeah. And then you can feel your stomach now. Because when you're out there, mm -hmm. I think you're more scared than anything than to worry about throwing out. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is. Also the thing is like um even for me when I go off a ride with people, it doesn't matter how many times I've been out here, you still get sick it's it. because you're not in control. Yeah. So I think, oh, in this corner, even I go this way, then all of a sudden they're like, boom, they, they cut it. And you're like, whoa, like yeah. you just don't know what's coming up, even if you know the lines in the corners. So for me, even after all these years, if I ride in someone else's car, I still get sick after like a certain amount of laps, depending on the driver and stuff. Yep. He can drive. <sighs> now I'm feeling sick. <laughs> All right, let's get taken care of. All right, guys, so let's hop out of the car. After a couple runs, and it just holy, oh, just just takes a beating, you guys. Like it's pretty soft and so sticky. And look at this. Like this is all tires. Oh, Ooh, those are hot too. <laughs> Don't forget. Everything underneath there is super hot and I just barely touched the brakes and oh, it's so hot you guys. I kid you not, I did start feeling a little sick towards the end man. Uh, I tell you, Peter is 100% right, driver or not, doesn't matter what you guys do in your car, whether it's like super power or just a couple hundred horsepower, it just rips when you know the lines and how to drive. And just, I think any kind of car in the right hands can probably like do wonders, you guys. All right, Peter, for this track, yep. what do you think the best car would be for this track? Honestly, after being here for a while, I feel like the best car, Beep 6 or BRZ or S2000. Those two seem to be the best here for like the quartering of the car. So uh, in a couple of years even, they've won like TJ1, 2, and 3. It's not a class of work here is you have four classes, TJ3. TJ3 is like mostly a pedestrian vehicle, any car that shows up off the production line, if you have some light mods and stuff, you're still be TJ3. When you accumulate too many points, or your car is like like a GT3 or an M3, where it's like a performance variant of a you know normal car, what's gonna happen is that's gonna push you up to TJ2. TJ2 is like a production car that's pretty modified up. And if you're caged or you have a purpose-built like street car that becomes a track car, you will be up, you up to TJ1, and TJ1 is all closed body cars. We have one called TJ0, which is open wheel, but we don't have a lot of people that come up with open wheel. But those are the three classes there, and like, even in some years, the FRS has won TJ1, 2, and 3. They've won all three classes, different drivers. Yeah. And it's because the car prepped well is like excellent on this track here. So this track is 2.7 kilometers, 14 turns, so you don't really get up to speed before you have to like do a maneuver for the cornering. Yeah. So that's why this car, like weight, horsepower, and stiffness of the chassis, really, really good out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not necessarily if you got the biggest horsepower, it doesn't mean really much on this track. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like a lot of bigger horsepower cars actually end up being heavier. So some of the tight lid turns that you guys saw us going on, they actually do worse around there because yeah. they load the tires too much, load the brakes too much, and they're trying to get that weight around the corner. Yeah. So realistically, what you're trying to say is, if I brought the GTR, I just got annihilated. <laughs> there'd be some guys on your tail for sure, man. There's some guys, but you know what? We have had guys who are very fast bring their GTRs out to do set really good times, but they also have another car that's like more like their track weapon. And I think they prefer that actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you know what? So. Like there's a lot of tracks coming up, like you know RMM opened up between Edmonton and Calgary okay. or Area 27 by okay. Kelowna. Yeah. That track, those tracks are like, you know, for the high horsepower cars. Like GTR, GTRS, I heard like the RMM, the new track, the 866 can't even keep up out there. If you're like a novice or intermediate driver with a very high horsepower car, you'd smoke an advanced driver in this car. So it depends a lot on the track layout. Yeah. 
It's just this track wouldn't, but honestly, like your GTR would do really good in those high power tracks. And you'd have a breeze because you could really, really open up on that track. You could really feel like what that car can do. Yeah. Because I think if you open up on this one, you end up hot into the wall, right? Dude, man, like I feel like this would be so fun out there, man. The Corolla right now, fun. That would be really fun out there. I feel like if you really want to, first day, you could actually go out and that. You could break that. Oh, yeah. Some guys come up with a Honda Fit, Yaris just chill cars they go out there they're just learning you know good car control good balance yeah just trying to feel it right yeah, yeah. so with that said peter so what's going to cost you the most going to the track here is it tires or just your brakes or just in general because when you start off probably track b because the b here to start off right now is 300 bucks yeah. first day you pay extra 100 for a trucker 400 but now as you start getting into it your next highest cost would be tires if you ran something sticky but also fuel is a factor now, right? With the rising fuel prices. So my car, I can run the whole day, one tank, but at R35, you see a lot of guys, they bring jerry cans, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're running like 200 bucks worth of gas. Yeah, but tires, yeah, probably a big one. And uh, brake pads eventually as well. The other thing I was told is guys that do very well, yeah are pretty much like fearless. They don't give two craps about the car because they know yeah. they're going to push. The guys that really baby their cars and stuff yeah. don't tend to not do very well is because they baby their car, right? It's yeah, just, that's true. That's I, true, I right? I agree with that. I feel like <laughs> if I didn't care about my car as much, I would have gone you faster way better, right? a lot earlier. Yeah. It took me a lot longer to get kind of like in a good fast pace. Yeah. So because I was kind of babying my car. But if you guys will remember, we're out there at a corner. There's certain corners where being smooth and driving optimally is better than overdriving. Sometimes when you like have an S or a certain corner, if you hammer too hard or you're too aggressive, you actually go over and you're extending the racing line. Yeah. And you're also not getting the grip that's like optimal. So you can also overdrive your car. So the trick out there is to be like consistent, smooth, and have like good inputs, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, what can I say to you guys? Wow, like absolutely mind blowing. And my first time on the track was like <sighs> sensory overload, I would say. I thought I was a good driver until I took a ride with Peter. And yeah, it's just next level, you guys. And if you guys have never been on a track and you have a fast car or you think you have a fast car or take it on the track, you guys, or do a ride along with somebody if you have a track in your area and you will know You'll, you'll get a sense right away how, how good your car is or how good of a driver you are. And like Peter says, driver mod is number one and I, hold, I, I totally 100% agree with it. Um, even if you have a fast car, high horsepower and you don't know how to use it, uh, it's pretty much no good. It's just a work of art that just sits there. Uh, I wanna say a huge thanks to Peter for uh, taking me out and uh, taking his time and actually doing this vlog with me. Check out his channel, you guys. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Peter is a guy with abundance of information, especially about wheels or anything in wheels and tires. This guy is the guy to hit up, you guys. If you guys are iffy about tire size and fitment for your car, he is the actual guy to hit up. And huge respect for him, you guys. Uh, race car driver and I'm a huge fan, uh, I would have to admit, and a bigger fan now that I've actually drove with him or did a ride along with him, man. Yeah, hit him up, you guys. Yeah, gonna go install the roll cage, you guys, so stay tuned. Uh, it should be in the next few vlogs, hopefully, and when I get time, I'll find out. And don't forget to subscribe, you guys, and hit up Peter's channel. Subscribe to his channel, you guys, and we'll see you guys in the next week's vlog. By the way, I didn't get sick, you guys. So, yeah, the bar bag is so good. Yeah. Don't worry, next year we will take the GTR on the track. I promise you. On the track. And maybe some more other stuff. And the drag here. Okay, see ya. Tell